Um, on, on sovereign borders, um, I think it's uh, related to what I was saying before, that having uh, caused a lot of upheavals, uh, either through economic policies or to straight military force, um, sovereign borders is an attempt to put the barriers up uh, and deal with the problem of failed states and broken societies uh, by locking those people out um, and saying, well, they're economic migrants, which of course they are. Uh, to a large extent, and that's because the, the economies have been uh, have have had uh, you know uh, have been affected quite strongly by uh, the so-called globalization period of the so-called golden era of the Bill Clinton uh, presidency. Um, the military, the Commonwealth is is not central to Australian policy. It is something that you do uh, if there is some kind of. Uh, uh, free and fair election that needs to be monitored in Zimbabwe, well, you'll send the Commonwealth in uh, in order to have monitoring of that. But the Commonwealth is not central to, uh, you know, it doesn't call the shots. Uh, rather, it's the military alliance with the United States where we, uh, we, we want to ensure, our policymakers want to ensure uh, that an American congressional delegation uh, or even a member of the executive government, a secretary of state or defense, goes to, say, Uruzgan in Afghanistan and sees the good work that Australians are doing there, uh, goes to the whichever sector in Iraq we would have been in uh, in order to approve of us. That's the continuing search for relevance um, that has motivated Australian policy, well, I don't know since when to begin, really, uh, 1908 with Alfred Deakin uh, and, uh, you know, the so-called search for security in the Pacific, independent of the, of the British. Um, so that the military alliance is is basically uh, in, intended to uh, get us noticed and to have key American people appreciate our contribution. The central feature of that alliance, however, is largely hidden from the public. It's not a secret so much as it's been hidden, and that is the role of Pine Gap um, and the, and the Northwest Shelf. Um, that is that is the the central uh, the central uh, component of why the United States sees Australia as important. Uh, there is an in interesting point that was said by the British Prime Minister during the Vietnam War, uh, when he says that, listen, President Johnson just said to me, send even a platoon of bagpipers to Vietnam. We don't care. It's the British flag there that counts. Okay? And so, it, it, in, in other words, it's an attempt to show that it's not the American invasion of South Vietnam, but an international coalition of the willing, etc. And I think our contributions militarily uh, to a certain extent, uh, are not completely, I mean, they're, they're, to a certain extent, they're not indispensable. We, we've bought certain equipment to make us indispensable in certain areas. Uh, but, the, but the real thing that's a, the strategic essence of the relationship, uh, to, co it, to use a term that somebody else has used, is the, the, the joint defense facilities, the, the Pine Gap and Northwest Shelf. Um, that, is, that makes us completely integrated into the United States warfighting machinery, and it is what actually makes Australia valuable to the United States. Uh, same with the, with the Northwest uh, Northwest Cape, um, the um, uh, ability of American submarines uh, to operate uh, across uh, across the globe. Uh, the Northwest Cape is important for that, uh, and Pine Gap is very important uh, as a ground control station uh, for satellites that start at around the Yemen-Afghanistan area and finish at around the Japan, uh, Sea of Okhotsk, you know, Russian, Far East Russia uh, area. The satellites that are in that zone are to a large extent controlled uh, by uh, the Joint Defense Facilities at Pine Gap. Uh, so that, that's the essence of the military alliance. Uh, 